Hi, I'm Randy Price. I'm the Senior Vice President at ArenaNet. This is Eric Flanham, lead designer of Guild Wars 2, and Matthew Moore, one of our QA leads. So this is this is it for us. You know, this is our, our unveiling of uh, gameplay for Guild Wars 2 here at Gamescom. I'm uh, already talking a little bit. I know you're a huge Guild Wars fan. Um, I, I, have you guys played Guild Wars before? Yeah? Um, so you guys probably kind of know a lot of some of our history. You know, we've we've sold over six million units worldwide. Of Guild Wars, huge, huge success for us. Um, you know, about half of our sales have actually been in Europe, and Germany is a huge country for us. So from our standpoint, we love it that we get to be here at Gamescom um, unveiling the game. Um, that's for us. That's just a, a really good, a really good thing, given that we're you know located in Bellevue, Washington. So joining us also, we've got. Uh, over 200 people at our studio in Bellevue who are actually playing Guild Wars 2 with us. Uh, playing with all of our fans on the show floor. They'll be, when we're running around the world, there's going to be, we're going to see a bunch of other players in there. Um, and a lot of them are people back in the studio on Cologne time. So the next five days is just a, it's a, a huge LAN party, if you will, back at the studio. So it's pretty, pretty cool. Um, you know, ArenaNet, we, we originally founded ArenaNet to innovate, to innovate in MMOs, to innovate in RPGs. Um, we feel like we did that in, uh, with Guild Wars 1, and with Guild Wars 2, we're pushing the envelope even farther. We, um, you've probably read some about uh, some aspects of Guild Wars 2 that actually are, are quite, you know, quite innovative. Um, your personal storyline in the game, um, our dynamic event system, and the way that we're approaching combat, you know, with respect to with respect to your personal storyline, we're actually we're actually there are choices that you'll make all through the world um, from the start of character creation, and we'll actually take a look at that, where where it actually impacts it actually impacts the story that you'll see as you adventure through the world. For you know, for dynamic events, this is actually our whole changed approach to the traditional quest chain in MMOs. Uh, no more clicking on NPCs, no more uh, huge walls of text coming up, no more uh, hearing about the fact that there's 10 ogres you need to go kill who are just standing around the field. And now, now we actually visually show you, um, you hear, you see what's going on in the world, and you choose to get involved, uh, you choose to interact with it. So for the demo experience, we're actually gonna show you um, a starting area for human, uh, we're also going to show you a higher level area for Char, where in Guild Wars 1, uh, Char was your antagonist. Um, in Guild Wars 2, Guild Wars 2 is taking place about 250 years after Guild Wars 1. And in the intervening 250 years, the Elder Dragons in the world have awakened and corrupted the land. So, actually, the, the only way to combat the dragons is the five races in the world need to need to band together and form an alliance in some fashion to be able to combat the dragons. So in addition to humans and charm in the game you'll be able to play our Savari race, our Asura race, and our Norn race. But again we'll show you human and char today. In addition to that we've got um, eight professions. We've already talked about um, at length our warrior, elementalist, and ranger professions. Today um, at Gamescom, we actually announced that we are, are having Necromancer, which if you play it out on the floor, you'll be able to play it as well. So here we'll, we'll start up and uh, jump into character creation for human. <clears throat> so we're going to play an elementalist. And in the, for demo purposes, we've really streamlined, streamlined the customization. Essentially, it's randomly chosen. There are, there's millions of variations that can occur in character customization that we will show later on. So here we're already getting right into making choices that will affect our personal story in the game. So here uh, Matthew's going to choose something that will actually uh, affect our visual appearance. <clears throat> this next question deals with personality. It deals with our uh, personality traits. As we venture through the world, we're going to choose the way that we interact with NPCs, interact with other characters that uh, will start to affect how you know the kind of skills we have and being able to charm others or or uh, uh, hear of the other traits of ferocity and dignity and the way that we can influence the world around us. A little bit of background about how we grew up. Did we grow up as nobility? Did we grow up 
um, at you know, living on the streets, or did we grow up with common folk? Um, this will directly impact even the opening sequence for the game, uh, based on our choice here. We're going to choose uh, common folk. Then we'll have a couple more questions that will have longer ranging impacts on your storyline in the game. <clears throat> so here we've got uh, a brief summary. This is a, we call it your biography. And this biography, your biography will grow and grow and grow as you play through the game. And now we're jumping right into the game. So we'll end up with a, an opening cinematic for Guild Wars 2. So this is actually now a place where the story, in the, even in the cinematic, will branches based upon what the choices we made at character creation. And that's our character there. Another point I wanted to mention is our art style for the game. Everything you see um, from that opening cinematic in the game world, uh, we re really are trying to go for a handcrafted, painterly aesthetic. We want you to see brush strokes. We want our, our, you know, our artists have, have this incredible palette where they're able to, through the way that we're even doing the in-game cinematics, to be able to show, um, to show the beautiful concept art that's coming out of our art team. So everything has that extremely artisanal, crafted style to it. Now I'm going to pass along to Eric. He's going to start walking through uh, the human starting area. OK. So uh, this is um, kind of our tutorial experience for the humans. You start out in the town of Shamor. Um, you're going to continue your personal story here by talking to Corporal Byrne there. Um, and he's going to tell you a little bit about the situation. Um, and one of the things you'll notice that we do a lot of is um, sort of overhead text, um, shouted stuff um, to help uh, direct players, especially those players who maybe don't really want to pay attention to a lot of uh, text, even though we try to minimize that as well. Um, one of the things that was important to us in the starting area was that we put you in an experience that felt very uh, uh, dangerous and uh, immediate, and so it's not you know, a real boring experience. It puts you, puts you right in the action. Um, so you'll see we'll probably fight a few centaurs here soon. You can go talk to some of the villagers and tell them to go back. There's a centaur. So as we get into combat, you'll notice uh, uh, there is no auto attack. Um, every skill that Matthew uses is because he deliberately chooses to use that skill. That was a choice we made um, because we wanted our combat, again, to feel more immediate. We wanted our combat to feel um, a little more action-y, a little more involved. Um, and so we, uh, we chose to uh, kind of not have that auto attack. Although we do realize that some players really like auto attack. Um, so uh, we actually allow players to, if you right click any skill, it will auto execute itself once you're in combat. And so you can see Matthew's doing that now. Um, 
and you also notice him dodging out of the way of blows and things like that. Um, you can double tap in any direction to dodge in that direction. Um, you can dodge out of attacks. Uh, you'll note also that sometimes you'll you'll find a uh, um, our monsters have big windups to their attacks that are kind of warnings for you to dodge um, out of the attack at that point. Another thing you'll notice about our combat is Matthew's using a lot of skills while he's moving. Um, we don't try to we try not to stop you too often when you're using skills, and we do that because we want again the combat to be very much about positioning and about movement and about. Uh, where the player is positioned, uh, you know, in relation to the monsters. And so, uh, so we found that stopping the character every time they went to attack was a real hindrance to that. And so it is the case that most of our skills are, uh, uh, can be used on the move.